fellow watchers and enjoyers, Ash and Piggy here of Watching Wolford bring you yet another edition of Watching Wolford. Will this podcast ever have a name? No. <laughs> no. I've just added the in front of it. That's the naming. It's the Watching Wolford podcast. It's episode... See, we are geniuses. We are yeah. geniuses. Uh, it is episode 49. And today's episode, we're going to cover the biggest storylines and takeaways from week 49 of 2023. All the episodes from the 4th of December all the way to the 8th of December 2023. You know what's an absolute mindfuck? What? Well, we are only three weeks away from having completed the full year of 2023. I know I said it in a very wanky, wanky autistic way, but <laughs> I'm allowed to say that. Um, but. Uh, there's only three weeks left of the fucking year. Like, I know that since it is December, I think we're we're allowed to get a, a little bit wanky about it, allowed to get a little bit reflective. We've been doing this for 49 weeks. Every single week, without fail, we've been fucking cranking the podcast out. Absolutely mental scenes. Just, yeah, just fucking... Having a meltdown. <laughs> the existential Wild. crisis is going to happen in about 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> all right. So main storylines this week. Honestly, not too many were really that prominent. It was very much primarily focused on one thing, which will obviously be Karen Taylor's exit and Mitch's exit as well. Um, um, that's, that's the biggest one. That's the biggest key storyline this week. Otherwise, we'll continue on by looking at Jack and Denise's relationship continuing to crumble. You know, a fair, a fair, a fair? Yeah. Suki is left broken. Obviously, she's reeling from Eve going missing. And I wrote it as Reese and Sonia has a hiccup. <laughs> find out what that means later um but as always anybody who wants to actually listen to the eastenders and you haven't watched the warford on taps now's the part of the podcast where we divulge for about 20 minutes just chatting about our own shit so be prepared and then 20 more minutes going through what is your, what, what a christmas trope that we like very true. Uh, like what is your favorite christmas episode or movie, movie or film or tv show um, yeah. But yeah, uh, without any further ado, to the real uh, pork, pork and beans, I don't fucking know, the real juice of the podcast. How you doing, mate? How's your week been? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, obviously, I'll mention it later on in the episode. Oh, excuse me. Let me get to it. But we're since we're recording this on a Friday, I just want to let you know, my dad watched EastEnders. Well, he didn't watch all of EastEnders. He didn't sit down and pop on the telly, put his feet mm. up on the couch. But he did watch a bit of EastEnders, and I will give you his thoughts on Phil kicking in the door later on. He did a reenactment for me, and I thought he was going to kick in our fucking sitting room door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Um, I will explain later on. But yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. My dad's actually, he's been telling me EastEnders spoilers, so it's like... It's like when you're a kid and uh, for us to be wrestling and your parents used to watch wrestling. Like, I remember a giant haystack, son. I yeah. thought, my, dad, my dad's a bit uh, younger. My, my, so my, dad, my dad's like, oh, wrestling's great. You know, a haystack's big daddy. Then, then haystacks went to WCW and they ruined him. <laughs> Just, fuck's sake. Fuck's my dad is sake. more of a... My dad is more like a... He, 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 he's, he's, he, I wouldn't classify him as casual. Oh, but, yeah, he's, yeah. He, but he does read, like, the dark sheets and the fucking news. Mm, and fucking he's like, oh, for, oh. But I don't know where he's getting these news from, because he's like, Hulk Hogan said he'd wrestle one more match. And I'm like, what? Did you know <laughs> that CM Punk was contracted to come back? He didn't sign his contract until the night of the pay-per-view. Whose source is telling you this, Dad? Just heard it online. <laughs> 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 fucking hell. Like, sometimes he's generally trying to wind you up, and that's why I talk for him. Oh, Roman Reigns hasn't defended the title in months. He should be stripped. Fucking hell. They love Roman. And I'm like, oh, okay. But uh, yeah, enough of that. But it is kind of like that bond where he's just telling me he's staying his file. And he's like, did you know that Chucky's going to find out about the kidnapping in a few weeks' time? And I'm like, oh, well, thank you. Thank you. So he's like, 
<laughs> but yeah, more about that later on, about fucking Phil kicking in the door. Um, yeah, I've been doing good. This this has been fun. Obviously doing Walter on tap except for Tuesday has been great fun. Um, our schedule will be a little bit changed because uh, we have to go by when EastEnders are releasing them yes. on the iPlayer. And on uh, and if we have to watch them when they come out a half seven, yeah. But we will. We uh, I know. Mate, I, ca- I can't wait to be working the fucking night shift. <laughs> it's, well, wake but six. He sends us out at seven. Well, now time to record three hours of Reddit video. Ooh, 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 happy Christmas. I wrapped um, it up and sent it. Send it. We're no saying I love you. I meant it. Yeah, Merry Christmas. On. Sorry, carry on, carry on. Um, yeah. Um, so obviously, the week of the the twenty first, the week twenty one, the twenty first of December. I know he said this is not airing on a Tuesday. Instead, it's airing on a Friday. So again, expect a waffle on top on the Friday instead of the Tuesday. And also, be prepared. I mean, just generally, for... they're they're not going to release it at the time. So. You know, you know how we now do it, where we have, we sometimes have the live reactions at half seven, and then we have the fucking Wolford on tap at eight. Obviously, that's probably going to be a little bit delayed because you know we, I, I, it's not a big trade secret because if you just look outside and you realize, oh, it's still light, they are pre-recorded. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry or to break the illusion to anyone. They are pre-recorded, and we upload, we do them in like we do it at like one. We record it, we get it all su- sent off, sh- like, shipped, easy, done. So, yeah, it'll be a little bit weird. Um, Obviously, on Christmas, we are planning on doing a live stream for watching the episode. It should be on YouTube. I'll have to set it up at some point, but I haven't done it yet, because it's still, like, fucking three weeks away. Leave me alone. Um, But, yeah, I... Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Um, I saw the house so how you... Yeah, um, but other than that, I've been good. Uh, you know, I've been, been talking to my friends, been talking to people. Um, obviously, just want to shout out them, because we're very all, early on in the podcast. Shout out to Slater. Good on you for streaming. You're not going to watch this video. No. But, but people, go follow Slater. I forget the Twitch name. I think it's like Slater it Mine is, it 2049. Like Slater Mine 2049. I'll be honest, I've been mates with them for years, and even I don't know how to spell their fucking nickname. <laughs> So I'm, gonna, I'm like, are you just Slater because you're a big fan of Heat Slater, or we, we, well, we'll find out one more match when we eventually get them on. I think it was simply on. a fucking game of tag, right? I'd assume so. Um, as are most names. Unless well, you get again, really I'm, ones. I've been reflecting this Christmas, and I, I'm still devastated that I have some lost media surrounding me. Um, <laughs> have I told you this? No. Um, when I was younger, I got into a beef with a child. But okay. I, I was a child as well at this time. Was there not a, was there not a diss track? Yeah, some kid did a diss track on me. And it's still lost media. I needed to be found. I love the diss track. He, 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 oh, I remember the lines. He was like, Piggy, you play with toys. Look at you, you fucking pathetic loser. Okay, and he's I like bet 13. you love boys and you're like, ah, ah bloody hell, that. Ah. You got me. Oh, <laughs> oh do do do. Who oh, knew? Yeah, um, knew before I knew. Yeah, I I love I love it. I I I'd love it. Um, I did an oopsie on Bumble uh, as well. Uh, the, me I I started chatting this lady. The, uh, dating app with people on the way. dating app, not not the bees. I wasn't chatting bees, and I by accident uh, called them mommy and they blocked me. I mean, it's always one of those things. It's like when, it's like when it, whenever, whenever like daddy gets brought up. There was like a, <laughs> there was like a two week period where I'd convinced myself I was like, yeah, that's fucking great, yeah. But like, just, just grotty, yeah. Call me daddy. Ah, ah, no, ah. But like, I remember I was having a conversation with one of my brothers. I'm like, because I was, I was in, a, I was in a fucking situation ship at the time. And I'm just like, you know what? I, don't, I actually fuck with it. I kind of like it. And he's just like, what's wrong with you, you mad bastard? I was like, nah, nah, yeah, but it's great. It's great fun. Yeah, it's really satisfying. And uh, obviously, once that situation chip f- uh, fell, as all of them do, if you're me, um, simply went, 
Nah, that's fucking gross, that. <laughs> but it's one of those scenes where if someone does it, you're not just you're not just gonna laugh at them. You know, you just you just go with it. Yeah. Go on, call me your fucking spiky hedgehog. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, oh, you dirty little fucking spiky hedgehog. You oh, you fucking <laughs> it just happens, all right? I don't know if I'm just too weak. I'm too weak-willed to say no. But fucking... Oh, bloody hell. All right. Yeah, no, we, um, the context is we were chatting. Um, we were chatting. And they said, I'm a goth girl. Oh, big dummy mommy. Then they went, yep. And then I just I just bought a shock face going, mommy. And they went, well, this is the end of the conversation. See you later. And I was like, fair enough. Just too too horny for him, good mate. I know. I was fucking I know. zero in on that. Fucking circled it like some fucking red tape, like dummy, mummy. Oh, it's <laughs> 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 so ascending. But enough about our, then, our weird uh, preferences. And then, like uh, another conversation I had is I match with a boy, and I was like, oh yeah, this is gonna be nice. He's a fan boy. He's uh, his Twitter, his, his bumper profile said, um, one thing you need to know about me is uh, if you like bottoms, I'm your man. And uh, we were chatting. You know, we were doing that. How are you? I'm good. How are you? How are you, Piggy? I'm good. I'm good. And then I went, How, oh, so what are you into? And I was expecting, like, oh, I'm into football or rugby, you know. Or uh, like I gaming. Like, yeah, you know, like gaming. I like on, Minecraft. On, on the beach. Yeah, yeah. I was expecting that, you know. Man, I was straight honest with me. He was like, they're gay, no? And I was like, <laughs> they're fly. They're fly. <laughs> like, I can't respond to that. What am I supposed to do? I, I love, yeah, yeah, fucking ain't no, yeah, fucking no bit. <laughs> if you like the fucking kid in the room. Yeah, well, I like Minecraft. <laughs> it's sound. <laughs> fucking, it, mate, honestly, the amount of weird, the amount of mishaps that, the amount of weird shit I've done in in those situ in these sorts of situations is unreasonable, um, and funny. It's, it's all it's all the content. It's all the content people actually want. Piggy. No, no, it's not. No, people want the EastEnders. But, but it is funny. It is funny. Yeah, it's like, funny like, if you can't laugh, like not at many it, it'll things just get boring. Because not many things can throw me off. Like obviously, Ash knows me as the horny one, but like the fucking anal comment, I was just like. Shocked Pikachu face, like I was. <laughs> oh, seven in the okay. morning. Anyways, or oh, whatever the fucking Clarkson mean is. Oh no. Anyways, fucking. <laughs> you know what makes it even better, Ash? It was yeah. seven in the morning. Who's who's on the horn at seven in the morning? You bad bastards. Like, Only thing I'm horny like... for at seven in the morning is some fucking toast in my belly. <laughs> What's going on there? Who wakes up on the horn? <laughs> Fucking mad bastard. It was like bet, half seven in the morning. this guy yeah. thinks morning wood's an invitation. It's not. Fucking nuisance, lads. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Leave me alone. Got shit to do. <laughs> I was like, I'll... <laughs> Good lord. That's why I was wholeheartedly expecting the message when I read it at half ten at eleven. I was expecting it to be like, I like gaming. It's just the fact I'm like, it's half seven in the morning when you send this, lad. I don't want to wake up thinking that, oh, your anus is going to be gaped like a fucking turkey. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> fucking... <laughs> Maybe it wasn't that extreme, like. Not, no, Maybe not. Not, not going to be doing a fucking goatsy. Like, fucking... <laughs> well, whoa, gape. This is disgusting, this podcast, good lord. But, but yeah, how have you been? Yeah, yeah, no, I've been sound, honestly. I've been all right. Um, I think a lot of it's just been about reflecting, really. I had a pretty rotten year, but I'm still doing quite good. Um, I, I just, Any other year, I'm absolutely fucking racked with depression and just struggling, but I'm pretty happy to be at a place where I can kind of bounce back from a lot of things that crop up. Um... And, yeah, no, I mean, this week's been all right. I've been wanting to stream a bit more. The one thing I am wanting, I've been enjoying watching all this, like, Christmas TV. It's been great. I've been watching, basically, the two things I've had on is I'm a Celeb and fucking Strictly, 
which has been grand. But it's also meant I've not had my weekends for like 10 weeks. <laughs> not had my weekends for like the last 10 weeks, which, uh, let me tell you, weekends are fucking fantastic. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be fucking willing to give it up as often. Like, if it's once a year for like 10 weeks, I'll manage that. But like, if I'm suddenly watching something every Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to have a meltdown. Um, like the weekends are the most busy part of the weeks at this point, which is fucking wild. Not, not a fan of that. Obviously, when this comes out on Sunday, I don't think there'll be a strictly, uh, uh strictly speaking, twelve point one. I think around week twelve, as uh, I believe Ash's favorite wrestler company is holding a pay per view, and uh, there yeah. should be, there should be. I don't Depends know. I haven't, I haven't figured it out yet. It's probably on at seven. Hmm. Um, but, well, Strictly can wait. Like, we'll, we'll cover it in some form. I'm not sure how we'll do it just yet. Um, but also, like, also been watching I'm a Celeb, which has only been on for, like, 20 days or so. And it's been grand, but it is also at fucking nine o'clock at night. Um, which is pretty much... It's it's midway through the... Well, maybe not through the evening, but, you know. Like, at nine o'clock, I'm just chilling. But now I've got to be fucking active and watch TV. Like, I know it's I know it's all stupid and, like... It's all stupid and just... I'm, I'm not... Nobody's forced me to do it. But I'm doing it. But I'm like, ah, oh, bloody hell, I've got to fucking sit and watch this show for an hour. Like, it's been fun. It has been great fun watching I'm a Celeb. I've been watching it with one of my brothers. We're having a chill time, laughing through the whole series. It's been it's been great fun, but also I want my fucking nine o'clock hour back. You know, is it? Um, can I ask? Is it? Is it your older brother or is it the one who's like who who was when I scared shitless of me? Who just who just ignored me for the majority? Which one is it? Is it the the more? I fucking know. You described as weird. It's not the oldest one. Yeah, so the middle brother, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, you know who I'm on about, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I, I mean, you're you're asking the questions. You're confusing yourself. <laughs> you're confusing <laughs> I am. Because I'm trying to ask the question. You're asking it in such a weirdly specific way, but also not at all. Because <laughs> I'm trying to ask without doxing their names. So you it's just the problem. big or small? Big. Um, here we are. No, another detail leaked about my, my brothers. Um, now it's, it has been sound, but like you know, I've been streaming more on my Twitch channel. Been doing doing the Sim the Simpsons. Want to be doing some more streaming stuff over the Christmas time because honestly, the Christmas time's probably the best time for it because everybody's knackered. The way I like the way I like streams to be. Is I like streams to essentially feel like everybody's just at the bar after a long day of work. You're all just chilling. You're chatting shit. You know, you usually know who you're with. You know, you're all just fucking having a having a relax and chatting shit at the end of the night. That's how I generally want streams to be. And that's what I've been enjoying. Um But yeah, I, and I usually I'd stream from like seven to like ten for like three hours. But now I've got shit to do at nine. I can't I'm struggling to fully commit, so uh, yeah, bring about two more days, and then it'll be done, and then a week, and then Strictly's done, and then I'll get to fucking do my own schedule again. Great stuff. Um, is are you thinking of doing a bully speed run? <sighs> Maybe. Watching fucking watching Slater do the bully speed run has been my favorite. Thirteen great, minutes though. on one mission was my favorite. Um, and then the next day, three minutes. Yeah, oh, I loved yeah. it. Um, but it's it's been fun, honestly. Um, I, I'm still not particularly in the in the Christmassy spirit. Somehow, my engaging with Christmassy stuff has kind of fallen off. Well, you know, I was listening to I was still listening to Doom at Christmas. You know, love <laughs> Christmas. It's for fucking hell. Here we go. Um, like I listened to a lot of that. But that somehow ceased to exist so far. I'll put up the tree, but the tree is the most disappointing tree known to man. Because I can't be fucked I can't be fucked to put lights on it yet. 
and I couldn't be fucked to even do the tinsel on it properly. So it's like it's like the tree's been fucking TP'd with tinsel. But it's just whee! It's like fucking flung over it. It's absolutely depressing. That's not is no one seeing that tree. That tree is absolutely see depressing. Um But I'm sure I'll get there. Um also obviously we are fully done with all the all the Christmas videos that we pre planned. Those are all done. Um we did put a we did put a community a community post out there suggesting what videos people would like to see. Uh, there's not been too many response I think there's, a, there's been one response to it so far. Um which I, I still feel like I want to do the idea from Danny May saying your top five Christmas episodes from Soap combined. So we'd both give our five. Um or just kind of piece together a list. I like the idea, but is it gonna happen? Who the fuck knows? <laughs> Maybe um, next Christmas. <laughs> It sounds like a really fun idea, but I'm, you know, I basically, we, we don't really have the room to just spend a day on a video with how we get shit done now. We kind of just like, move, move, move. Oh, you, we need, we need this, we need these video done. All right. It's barely ever like, all right, I'm taking the day. I'm going to work on a solo video. Fuck off. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been all right, honestly. Um. Just look. I just. I'm looking forward to being able to stream more. That's simply my what I'm aiming to do. Um, and I'm also just generally looking forward to Christmas. One thing that well, that isn't happening that I thought it was going to, but I just haven't done it yet. I'm still not caught up on Coronation Street, which I was swearing that I was gonna be, but I just, I just can't be fucked. I just. Like I love Cory. It's one of my, it's one of my top. It's definitely top three soaps, but the show is just a bit rough right now, and I just can't be bothered. Um, but yeah, um, I think that's it for me in terms of my week. It's been good. I'm having a good time. Although I I have been trying to trying to watch a lot of new shit though. Like like I finally. You know, people take fucking recommendations. Well, I've been, I've been finally going through my list of recommendations that people have been sending me over. Like, some people told me to do this, like, three years ago. And I'm like, yep, doing it now, boys. <laughs> doing it now. It's been, uh, it's been great fun. So, a lot of very fun moving parts. Um, I just want to shout out this little boy, Tamia. 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 Thank you. Um. Appreciate your comments for watching the podcast. Yeah, keep it up. Um, just shout out to you. You're an amazing commenter. Um, of course you're not like Abdul Rahim, where he's the goat. You can never be. You can never be him because he's Abdul somebody's... Rahim, the person who fucking. It's like we un we unlock a stream of consciousness. It's like, oh, this is a really cool idea. I'm going to think about this idea. Then every single new idea is a separate comment. And at, the, at first, I started responding to them all, but then I just realized that they wouldn't stop. And I just went, you know, maybe I don't need to respond to every comment out of 20. Um, good old Abdu Rahim. Yeah, yeah, you'll never um, beat Abdu Rahim unless you comment like 60 times. But yeah. uh, um, you are the goat. You are the female goat. He is the male goat. I'd assume he's a male. I'm just going to assume he's a male. If he's not, he's not. You but right. he is the Alpha other goat, Gen and you are. You. And you're the goat as well. And um, so shout out to you. Thank you for watching. And thank you for keeping our channel afloat um, <laughs> in these desperate times of Christmas. Because you don't have to watch us at Christmas time. We understand. We're, yeah, we're not your top priority. Family is. Or friends. Wow. Well, just having a good time, honestly. Um, yeah. So, like, I appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's great fun. It's lovely to have regular commenters who just, uh, well, it's just because we, we have a pretty fucking, we have our own perspective. I'm very open-minded. Piggy's pretty open-minded as well. So we like to think we, we have a decent enough range to be able to cover some more of the serious topics. Um, but it's also nice to get other people's take on it, as we all have different experiences, and, you know, it maybe we're not as well-informed as we may think we are, so it's good to get someone to just kind of be like, yo, here's, how, here's this perspective. It's really good fun. So thank you to all the commenters and people doing it. But as we're back on the line of Christmas, 
Um, I think it's now time we do our lovely little Christmas tangent. Um, okay. What what we decide this week was going to be? Uh, TV shows and film. Your favorite TV episode or film? That's Christmassy. That's Christmassy. Um. Oh Jesus! I have to think of a different one from. Uh... Well, see, the issue with me is most of mine goes to horror. But there are That's also fair. a lot of very strong horrors that are fantastic in its own right. Um, right, so... Oh, here we fucking go. I love... It's got to be between... One I mentioned last week, so I'm not going to mention it again. But I will, because fuck you, that's why. One's obviously Silent Night, Deadly Night, which I talked about last week, where a guy pretty much is confronted... By the trauma of being of his parents being murdered by Santa, um, and is fucking he's just oh Jesus Christ, and he's just confronted by it, and then he just snaps, just murders people as well dressed as Santa. That's a great fucking maybe not the best Christmas film, but it is it is very Christmassy and very good. Um, and each time he kills someone, he just goes. Naughty and fucking, <laughs> fucking, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's wild. It's a ridiculous thing. But if you want a genuinely very Christmassy horror as well, a uh, Black Christmas, a uh, 1974 classic, inspired a lot of the fucking, a lot of the fucking famous serial like uh, slasher villains. Um. Like, Michael Myers, he calls someone on the phone and you just hear Michael doing the... <sighs> you know, he does that over the fucking phone. That was obviously inspired by Black Christmas. He, I played with the the very smart, the killer is in the house trope, which obviously has been parried, parodied to death. Obviously, Scream fucking also loved this concept. Um, And the killer's in the house, but you never actually see him, which is fucking what you see, like an eyeball. And that's it. Oh, it's fantastic. Well, you do see him, but it's, you know, just watch it. Black Christmas, great. You can find it on YouTube. It's fucking piss. What I will say, don't watch the 2006 Black Christmas. Because subtlety goes out the fucking window and it's a really lazy, shitty remake. Um, Yeah, I've never seen them. What's the film I'm trying to think of? I, I, I watch the Christmas horror film. And Ash already knows which one I'm on about because I keep recommending it. I to to review it on Easily Entertained. I recommended it until like half last year for Christmas. It's not the one I've seen recently, which is like Deadly Night. The fucking Santa Claus killing all the intruders. Yes, yeah. but it's another one with um, an obsessive It's an obsessive boy who thinks that if I will get, will get his babes here to love him. And he basically, it's a horror Christmas film. Uh, I think it's a horror. It's definitely gruesome. And mm. fucking, he basically invites the boyfriend over. They do the Home Alone spot with the paint can, but it absolutely explodes the man's head. Um, and oh, fucking, they, t- they tie another man up to a tree and hang him, I think. Jesus. Um, and then the girlfriend, the, uh, I'm not going to spoil the ending, but fucking hell, it's, yeah, oh, it's, it's gruesome. I I think it's called like Deck the Halls or something. Probably not. Um, um, it's one that's called Better Watch Out, which looks kind of like what you're fucking suggesting, but it might not. be Better Watch Out. I mean, you also have some of the like very famous Christmas, like Love Actually is great fun. I don't think I I watched it a bunch, but I don't think I really enjoyed it so much. One, if you're like a bit more of a kid, you enjoy. I uh, enjoyed watching the uh, Nativity. Uh, that was always a fun little Christmas movie. Um, God, what else is there? Obviously, you have Miracle on 34th Street. We have David. Uh, it's one of the Attenboroughs. And you have the, the like, Mara, the one who played Matilda um, when she was still a good, well, when she was still a teen actor and actually fucking, or a kid actor, rather. Um, that's a great one. One thing we tend to watch at Christmas time, kind of with solidarity, because it was one of my dad's favourites. We do generally like to watch The Great Escape at Christmas, just because it's kind of, it's that, like, well, fucking 1960 classic group, but they've decided to put all of the fucking... all of the, the people who have been escaping the Nazi camps for the fucking year. Like, they've been escaping them every single time. They put them all into one camp, 
and you get this fucking huge like bid to escape and ask oh, it's just great it's just great um fantastic movie um um before i go into movies i'm just gonna get my two dark ones out of the way oh well one of them's light-hearted it's um so park where they do a christmas episode where they have a bunch of characters singing songs and it ends with jesus i believe it ends with jesus and santa singing christmas songs and santa ends up singing reho um i forget what the band's called but um I find the funny because it's like, it's only three fucking Santa Claus songs and a hundred Jesus songs. What the fuck am I supposed to do? The other one that is dark, and I have to rephrase it because I messed it up last week for a little Tammy and Wolf, and um, I will try and say it properly. Um, there, it's called Red Slay Down. Mm-hmm. And this is during the time where America went to war with Iraq. So South Park went, fuck it, we'll parody it. So they went um, balls to the wall, said Santa deliver presents to the Iraqis, and basically they don't know who he is, so they shoot the sleigh down, and then they torture Santa by ripping his rip in his pants, and shocking his testes, shocking his nipples, and then Jesus comes in for the save, starts shooting all the Iraqi soldiers, and then fucking Jesus dies. He dies again for your sins. I mean, and they save honest, Santa. Mate, I don't even think that was a bit that... that... It was just it was just the way you said ripped sounded a bit dodgy. Oh we right, sorry. About the little fucking hat. They weren't confused about the South Park at all. It's just it just sounded a bit fucking dodgy. And considering yeah, all yeah, the yeah, topics we've been talking about, you know. <laughs> you just wanted an excuse to talk about the South Park episode again. Yeah, um I, I do I, I if you're if you're not really if you don't you might not get it, you might not like it, which is fair enough. But I just I just like it for the fact that like um where Santa shoots the, the Iraqi soldier in the face and he goes, He he shocks Ta- Santa's bollocks. I don't know why that was just gets me. Um but if you want if you want my favourite Christmas film, Jingle All the Way with Arnold. Good old Jingle All the Way. He's love a good it. One. I haven't watched it in years, but I fucking used to watch it as a kid and I loved it. Yeah, I think um don't watch this sequel. I haven't watched it, but it's with Larry the Cable Guy, and it's it's just sad. Yeah, I mean, but my my movie probably is just Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Uh, it's a fun little. Well, they have to. It's like it's like actual actual Santa Claus is in the real world, and. He's been hired, and he has to prove that he is actually like he is actually Santa. And obviously, you have Mara Wilson as the adorable kid, like believing in him. And it kind of like you know the the, the court tries to judge him, like rule him insane. Um, but it's all about proving that Santa's real, and it's just it's a it's a like classic, obviously Richard Attenborough, uh, fucking legend actor, you know. Fucking, just absolutely great stuff. Yeah, it's really lovely. Just a very wholesome Christmas movie. Um, um Paul Malone, one, obviously. Yeah, Paul Malone's, Malone's classic. I've um, never seen three or four. No, um, I think they edited Home Alone two a little bit, I mean, which I find stupid. I think they edited it because Trump became president. But there is a scene with um, it's not even a scene. It's literally uh, like, fuck what. Yeah, Kevin walks and basically he just asked Trump a question and Trump just tells him says him an answer and they went, Nope, we can't have that, too political and I'm like Fox sake, lads, he's not even featured, he's only there for like a second. He's not <laughs> But it doesn't really matter. I don't know if it's actually been edited, but from what I heard it has been. It's oh, a bit weird. Do you wanna know my least favourite fucking Christmas movies? Okay, go on. Fucking a Christmas carol. Are Which one, the Muppet ones or the original? All of them. Fucking all of them. And it's not even because they're shit. They're fine. But it's just because every single fucking Christmas. My mum's like, oh, I love Christmas, Carol. Let's put it on. But because she likes to do stuff on the side as well. So, like, she'll start, like, fucking ironing whilst watching it. And she'll start, like, doing literally anything to not watch the fucking movie. But each year it's put on and we have to fucking sit through it and act like it's fucking great. And I just, I just fucking, it winds me up every year. It's like, yeah, let's put on the Christmas Carol, and she spends half the movie not watching the fucking movie, doing something else. And I'm like, you wanted this on. 
You wanted this film put on. We're watching it because you want to watch it. You're not even fucking watching it. Now I'm going to fucking watch it. I fucking hate the Christmas Carol. Yeah, it's a great tale of fucking Christmas spirit. Fucking, he's, he doesn't believe. Now he believes he's used to be an absolute prick. Now he's actually nice because of fucking tiny Timmy. He's having a great time. Where the fuck his name is. Fucking Cratchit, Crotchit, whatever the fuck his name is. The, the poor, his poor worker, you know. Ah, oh, mate, fucking honestly. I just, um, like, it's a cool story. It's a great story. The power of Christmas spirit. It finally it makes a grumpy old man where everybody thinks he's going to die alone. It makes him fucking, he wants to change. He wants to be different. Self-improvement. You're going to get better. But fuck off if I had to watch it every single year. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> oh. It felt good to get out, though. I can't, I can't, I can't really be yelling at my mum like that, you know. But that's you, you internalize some of this stuff. Fucking fuck off. <laughs> um, uh. Obviously, um, you have fucking what's it called? I'm trying to think of the one that I was literally thinking about five seconds ago. And give me a second. Obviously, you have fuck what's it called? I'm trying. Willie really Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That's about charity. And um, that's a Christmas film, I believe. Is it a Christmas film? Well, it's put on every Christmas, and it's on Christmas Day. So yeah. I can't say that's a Christmas film. Yeah, fair enough. Um, the original one, not the Johnny Depp one, where... I, it always confuses me, because Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is about Charlie getting the Chocolate Factory. And then Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is about Willy Wonka and being traumatised as a child. So I'm like, oh, my God. Um, But I, I, I want to see the sequel to... I, no one has ever adapted it to a film, but I've read the synopsis for it. I haven't read the book, but it sounds like the most batshit film ever. Um, do you know the sequel to Willy Wonka? Uh, I've heard things, but I know it's just absolutely wild. Yeah, the sequel to it is A Glass Elevator, and Charlie and Willy go, I think they go to space, and they fucking fight aliens. <laughs> I'm like, what was Rodal? Like, the first one's about chocolate. How the fuck's the second one about a glass elevator going fuck off to the middle of nowhere fighting aliens? I mean, Rodal was, 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 was a bit mental, like. <laughs> he was yeah, a he bit was wild. anti-Semitic, so fuck him. Bit wild. Um, but, yeah, I want to see that adapted as a film. Did Don't write some, some, good, some good books, so far. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know, I d Fucking every year, though, I always get the urge to watch Harry Potter again. And I don't know why, but it's just, it's always in the back of my head. But I mostly just remember one fucking New Year where I was drinking wine. And I was just having a meltdown because Harry Potter was on. And obviously, I don't, I feel like everybody else has this. Wine just makes you emotional. <laughs> so I was just having a fucking meltdown watching Harry Potter. Just fucking... Just thinking about all the thing, like all the mistakes I've made and all the people I've fucked up. Well, not fucked over. I'm not not that fucking damaging. You know, all the like situationships that went wrong. How could I done better? Just having a fucking meltdown. Um, and obviously fuck J.K. Rowling. Uh, just did that so Piggy didn't have to. Um, so I knew it was happening. Yeah, um, yeah. If people who know me, I fucking hate J.K. Rowling or Rowling, however you pronounce that yeah, anti-fucking well, trans we, we, bitch. Yeah. Hope you die in a fire, you old cunt. Fucking hell. I don't care. That's clipped out of context. I I gladly speak my opinion on J.K. Rowling. <laughs> you're you're making a Harry Potter series now, um, and you're hiring actors who can't speak out their beliefs because if they don't agree with you, you're going to be upset. So they have to agree with you. Fucking bitch. <laughs> I'm not making that up. That's actually happening. They're making a Harry Potter series and the actors have to align with J.K. Rowling's opinions. And if they don't, they, she can easily sack them. <laughs> How fucking evil can you be? Yeah, just make it stop. Just make it stop. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, we don't need to say any more on that. You've said everything that possibly is. I was like, I wonder if Piggy's just, just going just gonna to say... Just, Gently, gently at the line. Fuck you. Ah, oh, bloody hell, you sent it that way. Fuck's sake. 
Um, but that's fine. No one's no one needs to protect J.K. Rowling. She'll do just fine. Crying. I can't wait for all the comments house. sections to be like, she wrote Harry Potter, like you know, like that Kanye West, but he wrote Graduation. Like that is exactly going to be like that in the comments. Um, I can't imagine so, but people do like to complain a lot. Um, yeah. So where? What other Christmassy stuff? Fuck me, this is 40 minutes. All right, we'll have one last little segment talking about the Christmassy stuff. And then um, we'll actually talk about the EastEnders. Um, everybody mentions, obviously I mentioned Love Actually earlier. It's kind of, I don't know, like, what, what do you reckon does more? Do you reckon Christmas music kind of, what do you reckon gets you, like, in the, I don't, know, I don't really know if you're particularly in, in the spirit of Christmas ever, but, you know. It, out of music or like movies and TV, what do you reckon would like send it for you? What would you, what would what would take you there? A movie makes you happy, but I love music. People who know me, I love music. Well, I do, my 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 variety is very broad. Like Ash knows me, I only like about five or six bands. Um, but I do listen to a lot of music. Uh, it helps me relax. I love music because you'll have like last Christmas. About breaking someone's heart. You have Paul McCartney. That's like, uh, have a fun time at Christmas. And then you have John Lennon. People are dying. Fuck you, <laughs> die. It's like, oh yeah, John, I love that. Like, I love how everyone else is like, it's Christmas time. Get on, your friends. Have a jolly old time, John. People are dying. War is still happening. Fuck you. And I'm like, oh, John. You're a miserable man. But yeah, I love music. Um... I haven't listened to many Christmas songs. My dad had a Christmas song playing earlier on. It was all right. Because he downloaded a Christmas song app. And it was just playing in the background. So that was all right. Um, my dad loves my dad loves Christmas films. He always watches uh, The Christmas Carol. The, I think the 3D remake. I think. Really, um, homie. <laughs> every <laughs> really, Christmas. Really. <laughs> really. <laughs> Fucking. I'm not going over there ever. Fuck you. Um. I don't watch it with him. He watches it by himself because he loves it. Yeah. Um, my granddad, obviously, again, I mentioned it before, Willy Wonka. But whenever Willy Wonka was on at Christmas when my dad was younger, like when he was growing up, um, my granddad would be like, Stop, turn off that fucking shite now, will you? Turn it off. Turn it off. Um, there is an infamous there is an infamous story that happened at Christmas that I wanted to tell. Um, so they were planning Christmas Day because my dad's family is a big family yeah. like he has six three two brothers and five sisters and so they were planning christmas day and one of the sisters was supposed to come with her kids and my, my dad obviously didn't have me at the time um so my dad was a child so they're like planning it and then on the day they're like we can't come my child's got like got a chicken pox and so my granddad is literally shoving this turkey into the oven and like my dad had to eat turkey sandwiches till Easter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but he he bought a big turkey, expecting a big like family gathering. And <laughs> fucking nope. <laughs> yeah, no, that yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, I, I look, we've we've fucking talked about this stuff enough. It's been forty minutes. Um, we usually are talking about the extenders for at least twenty minutes in, into the podcast, so. Let's just run through. I don't think we need to spend super long, but the busiest one will be the Mitch, uh, Mitch and Karen exit, as that's the most important stuff. Um, but let's just kind of quick fire through the first three topics, and then we'll get to the final bit, and then we'll obviously end the podcast. Um, I hope people do enjoy this sort of slightly different feel. It's just a way to make it so the podcast isn't just the same shit. It's like, oh, yeah, you guys have been enjoying this. Ah, oh, well, watch it again. Like, what? Why? Well, we ran out of content, so watch it again. <laughs> like, but hey, who the fuck knows? This is a wanky podcast in its own. The one place we're allowed to talk about ourselves rather than the EastEnders. So, um, what are you going to run through first? Um, the first topic is Jack and Denise's relationship start to crumble. I w um, there wasn't too much about this one, honestly. It's just Denise gets back from holiday, which she's been on for a little bit. Obviously, after all the Ravi stuff, she needed to get away. It stressed her out. Um, and she gets back. Obviously, Stacy's there. B 
because she's with like with, with Charlie as well. So Stacy's there in her absence, and Sam's also come back and moved back into their house without Jack telling her at all, which obviously causes a bit of issues. And then even then, so she's like, oh, shit, a new fucking pie and mash shop. Lovely. I want pie and mash. And obviously, she sees Dean. And, well, you know, she's got a bit of a history with Dean. She was, uh, I think she was his stepmom for a little bit. Um, but obviously, it seemed like she was defending him at the time, but also quickly kind of went, no, he was just a rapist, wasn't he? Like, just not, <laughs> you know. Obviously, she... Now, Jack's not told her about fucking anything, um, which is the kind of wild bit. So obviously, that, that's a bit of, like, tension. And just every single time, they're all at the fucking... The, the lights turning on, you know? Denise and Jack are together, but Jack's looking at Stacy like she's a fucking piece of... Like a, like a fucking supermodel. Just like, oh, bloody hell. Oh, 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 me, looking at a, oh. me looking at a drumstick of chicken. <laughs> like, just absolutely eyeing her up. Obviously, she's had... And, you know, we're getting the... Okay, when most people cheat in soaps, they usually do try to make a good reason for it. And they're essentially... They're, they're, po they're posing Denise as, like, fairly uptight, you know, serious, not much fun anymore, very family-focused. And then you obviously have Jack, who is being told, like, oh, you know, I hope Denise understands. I hope, like, you know, I hope she appreciates you for what you're doing. Um, and obviously this is going to set a bit of, like, tension in the back where, you know, what if Denise gets upset about something and Jack doesn't understand? And he goes to Stacy, and then Stacy's like, well, hey, you you were me. You wouldn't have to worry about it. And then it kind of, he starts to be like, eh, I mean... You know, and Stacy's gone to Jack for help, um, and they're just, you know, you can start to see the tension starting to build up, just as Denise and Jack are crumbling. Yeah, that's um, all that happened with Jack and Denise. I've not much to add, um, because there's very it's, few scenes. It's hmm? exciting. It is exciting. It's exciting, yes. We haven't. It uh, feels like we haven't. We haven't gotten an affair since the Denise one, right? Funny how she's like involved again. One. Um, I still laugh how he he had to be like, ah, oh, bloody hell, fucking. There's got to be an infidelity in Jack and um Denise's relationship, and it's like, yeah, well, it's not going to be fucking Denise again, is it? <laughs> there will be. Something happening. Jack's cheating on Denise. <laughs> Sound. It's just like, it makes me laugh. And everybody's like, I don't understand why everybody's saying Jack and Stacy. Well, what about now, dickhead? What about today? If you can't see where it's going, you fucking point out a plane and they'll like pull out some binoculars and miss it. Thou fucking off your radar is, you mad bastards. Of course, Jack and Stacy are going to have a little bunk up. Maybe not a full blown affair, but they're definitely going to have a cheeky shag before Christmas. Of course. Of course. It's EastEnders after all. Fuck you now. Um, next is Sonia and Reese. Uh, yeah, it's either that or Sucky. Uh, Sucky. Uh, Sucky. Is, um. Sucky, Sucky. 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 Um, Sucky is looking sad on her phone because Absolutely she's... Absolutely fucking miserable. <laughs> she, she's looking sad because... Sad's an understatement. He, uh, she, she hasn't received anything from Eve. She's... Eve's just told her, fuck your life. Yeah, she just got um, a text saying, look, I'm leaving, sorry, can't hack it, see ya, bye-bye, bye. And then obviously she's now got a deal with like, what the fuck happened? You know, she was waiting at the fucking, at the, at, at the tram station, you know, she was ready to go. It's time, we're going to start a new life. Oh, sorry, can't come, lol. <laughs> um, and, yeah, obviously she's fucking distraught. Because now she's got to deal with fucking Nish. Like, yeah, it's going to be the perfect Christmas. And Sucky doesn't 
doesn't buy because she goes to Stacy and Stacy's like, you have you seen Eve? And Stacy's like, yeah, I mean, she's probably just fucked off in Brighton or something. And then Sookie's obviously, well, 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 no, of course she's not fucking doing that, is she? Like, why would she do that? There was no reason for her to just decide to leave. Um, and the most build, the most build to this, you just kind of see her struggling, kind of silently, as you know, you do have some other dynamics as Raffi started to kind of it's just not really having a good time with Nish. Raffi is kind of questioning everything Nish is doing. Like, what, you're telling me you're keeping that phone, you fucking cheeky bastard. What's wrong with you? That that links us to it. He's starting to realise how probably controlling Nish is, and maybe that he do he does have like a hold over everyone, you know? Maybe he's just not worth protecting. Um Which is you know. Makes sense. It's generally how I see that happening. Anything else to say about the Sookie and Eve stuff? Uh, no, no, but uh, Ravi fucking missed that phone multiple times. That hammer. <laughs> fucking, fucking. <clears throat> oh, you've missed it. Yeah, like. You've missed it. Mate, Vinny's got a phone repair shop. Just show him the broken phone. Get that screen fucking sorted. Easy. No stress. Um. But yeah, it's uh, it's just it's slowly realizing that Suki's unhappy. Obviously, she's gonna find out and probably plot revenge over Christmas, if I had to guess. Um, and that'll be a pretty pivotal part in the big Christmas storyline. Um, Reese and Sonia have a hiccup. Um, essentially. Sonia and Reese are about to. I think they're having like like a jab to, kind of. It's it's a part of the the IVF process where I think this is the time where you're gonna you're gonna like basically this is the they're gonna learn if they're gonna have a baby soon or not. They'll be able to see if it worked. I think. Um, but obviously as they're about to, they're like, oh, come on, Reese, just one more time before we do this jab. You know, let's have a do it the old-fashioned way um obviously reese gets a call and debbie's got pneumonia which is obviously not a fucking thing that's very easy to battle especially not if you're bedridden and already have to be heavily monitored to see if your condition changes i had pneumonia when i was born <laughs> it could have died me and my mum had pneumonia and that's why i'm fucking 11 weeks premature because uh, they had to be like, fuck, get him out, he might die. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I could have had a lot of issues, but I managed to fucking roll a straight 100 or a straight one, just avoiding them all. Um, there we are, cheeky Fine. brag. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, and it it starts to kind of juxtapose Sonia against Reese a bit more as simply saying Sonia just wants to get on with married well, not married life, you know, wants to get on with being a couple. But it feels like every time she has the moment to move forward with Reese, Debbie is like, Well, do 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 it's like it's obviously not it's need the person's fault. It's just a very Sonia situation to get herself in, where it's fucking like well, I'm I'm with my new my, my new fella who has a wife. It's like what what? Yeah, well the wife is bedridden and you know is dealing with the aftermath of having a stroke in a I don't know what what the term is, but you know in a bath. <laughs> Te technically true. I meant more so just just her condition of not being able to do anything by herself. Potato. Know? All right. Um, no, it was bad written. I can tell you this shit. Ve ve vegetative state, um, or catatonic, maybe I don't know. Regardless, Caterpillar. um, it's a mate. You fucking derail with caterpillar. What? What are you on, mate? What are you on? <laughs> um, not even laughing at it, just baffled. It's not what's going on in your fucking brain. 
Um, I don't know. I don't know. So it just it carries on. Um, each time they tend to move forward, Debbie's condition changes. They move a step back. Sonia's chatting to Kathy about it. Kathy's just kind of like, just like, you really, really want to, got to keep dealing with this? Like, what, what are you going to do? Like, well, and basically, Sonia, Sonia pretty much says, oh, it'd be nice if you just died. <laughs> pretty much. Just, just kind of goes, I just want to be able to move on with my life. But obviously, if she died, Reese would be fucking ruined by it. Um, and yeah, it's just that it's putting them at odds again. But it's still really wondering when they're gonna learn that Reese has been stealing money from Debbie. Like, I, you never know. But it's it is a, it's another hitch in the relationship. It's a little rug pull. Moving forward, moving forward. Art, oh, never mind. Get fucked. Um. So finally, let's talk about Karen and Mitch's exit. Um. Do you want to just run through kind of? The cliff notes of this week. So we start off um, with with um, Miss running into the back of Harvey's cab, and basically Cameron goes, "Look, look, 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 that." Well, she doesn't take the money out of her bra, but I like to imagine she just goes like this, digs deep into her bra like this, like she pulls out a fish, and then she pulls out a nose, and she's like, "Look at this! Look at this! Poof! Out here!" 50k, uh, 10k to him, 10k to the cat, but and then cat gives it the fill, fill checks the money, he spaps all over it, uh, no it's not, he's written on the notes, um, a mark them, so he checks with a UV light, um, I need that fill, thanks, and basically, I need, I need a UV light, to check the sheet, check where, where I'm sleeping, see if the bed's been, uh, Messed with. Stay on track, mate. Come on. I will, sorry. <laughs> been um, for 56 minutes. And then, basically, he, he puts a investigation in to see can he catch Guiano out. And, basically, what we see is he asks, he asks, uh, fuck, what's her name? Uh, Sam, can he, can she help him? And Sam basically finds a social media post with Malcolm, with Malcolm, you know, chilling with uh, Albie. Uh, he's chilling with his unky. Um, and he's just chilling with a, with a, with a little fire stick. Um, uh, sparkler. And basically, we see Phil confront. Well, you know, first he goes runs through the garage uh, to see if the money's in there or what he could find. Then he goes to confront, uh, he goes upstairs to check the money, but who does he run into? You think you're special? You do. I can see it. It's a uh, tiramisu. Um, tiramisu basically oh, says, oh, you never stepped for a drag queen before, have you, Phil? Wouldn't it be nice, Phil? Wouldn't it? To go down on tiramisu. And Phil's just like... It's, he's I don't very understand startled. This, he's very fucking... Like Phil's, Phil's not homophobic anymore. He's learnt. He's, he, but he's not exactly a fucking massive ally, right? Like, is Phil going to Pride? I think not. But he's. Also oh my god, that like, needs to be a children need fucking Phil in Pride. Um, fucking marching for uh, marching in a Pride. For... But yeah, it's just. We weird. are gay and we are here. And we are queer. Oh, yeah. I'll, oh, fucking give it to me. Give me Phil with an LGBT flag. Fuck it. <laughs> um, it's just seeing the image of Steve McFadden in a pride parade that gets me. Um, so basically, he asked Tommy, look, Tara, look, look, can you, can you, you know, slay him? And basically, Tommy's so confused by Tara Masu. I mean, if you don't know what a drag queen is, you are going to be confused at first. Let's be honest. Um, basically, so he goes upstairs to talk to Bailey. He goes to use the uh, restroom, and basically, he runs into Karen's bedroom, steals her bra and knickers, and you know, takes te- uh, checks the money. The money's there. Robs about a hundred or two hundred pound, um, and brings it over to Phil. And Phil just investigates it. And he's like, yeah. And then he confronts uh, Keanu. 
And then Karen basically takes the rap. And then the last two episodes are basically... The last three episodes are basically, like, Karen debating what she will do. Yeah. With, with the money, and basically, I will mention my dad now in a minute, but Phil kicks in the door, and he goes, Karen! No, I, I think he shouts Taylor. Oh, he shouts Taylor. I think he shouts Karen. Um, and this led to my dad telling me about it, and he did a reenactment where he went to kick the shit room door, but he didn't, and he just started shouting Taylor at me, and I was like, fair enough, fair enough. It would have been funny if he fell on his ass, but he didn't. Um, so yeah, he was telling me about that, and basically Phil demands his money, and Cameron won't give him his money. Um, also, Karen Masu hid the money in her oven, and Karen hides the money in the oven, and yeah. basically, the final, th- the final two episodes is Karen coming to herself, thinking, right, do I do the right thing, give the money back, or do I do the wrong thing, and just fucking fleece him? And she decides, you know what? You know what they say, fuck the haters from the underground. Yeah. Motherfucker named Ice Cube. And she basically steals the money, gets in a van with Mitch, Bailey, and the two kids, and they all run off together. They all get in a fan and they all drive off. They also also dig up they also dig up um Chantel's uh tree and steal the tree. Which, you know gotta do what you gotta do. Respect the get respect the crime, not the hate. Um and yeah, that's what they do. They drive off, she gets Julius theme and Phil ends the episode by going, I want my fifty K I want my money I want my money That's basically the Cliff Notes. Yeah. Anything it was, uh, Yeah, it was just it was a. Uh, I suppose it's also Mitch, um Mitch, Karen, Bailey, Mac, Mia. They're all leaving, you know, they're all departing the show, they're all gone for now. Um and it's just a general it's it's a it's a nice to see. I suppose it also got the Julius theme, which is the key point. Like as much as people may not really give a shit about the Karen Taylor character, some people love him, some people hate her. I was never really been on side, but as someone who just pretty much just really disliked the Karen character for years. Obviously, it's the kind of it's kind of like the Lola situation. Except, you know, people like Lola, and Lola could have done a lot more. It's like, you give them a really good exit storyline. And now everybody's like, God, I'll miss Karen. She was really good. And it's like, yeah, but she was shit for, like, fucking six years. You know? She she was garbage for the last six years. Yeah, she had some emotional stuff, but a lot of it became very one-note. And, you know, I had a writer and make her very interesting. She'd re- She'd react to everything the same. Any dodgy thing would just be like, my boy, my boy. You know, that's it. That's all it would be. Like, it's just one of those fucking things. Where it was very nice. The one thing that does make me laugh is that fucking... It was just really funny. Because, every, like, oh, Karen's leaving. Yeah, fair play, Karen, you did good. And then Mitch leave, and everybody's like, no, Mitch, no, you can't no. go. You can't leave, Mitch. Karen, ah, well, you know, good job, you know. Maybe you can come back in 20 years, be that old grandma. Oh, Mitch, no, what are you doing, lads? That's the funny bit to me. <laughs> it's just the complete dissonance between, oh, Karen. Oh, fucking leaving to you, boy. Mitch, please come back, please. Um, but it's it's how it's how to be expected, really. The Taylors don't really have that much of a place on the square. I feel like they'll all probably be gone very soon. I don't know if Bernie will stick around. Like it's hard to tell. But if if in our scenario where I don't think Keanu dies at Christmas, but when Keanu realizes that his son isn't his and he's no longer with Sharon, I do feel like he'll probably. Like he, like I feel like once all the dodgy shit that he's done gets exposed, he will have to go on the run again. And I just wonder whether Bernie will actually kind of follow suit, or whether she'll just be like the one person hanging around. Um, and I honestly can't tell you what would be the outcome. Um, I my question is, why didn't he go to Mexico? 
Why would they? Fucking sun out. That's where most people go on the run. Fucking lovely time in Mexico, you know. I mean, also Spain. Okay, fair enough. But like in Spain, you have Grant Mitchell. So yeah, you're, yeah, but you're fucked. Grant Mitchell doesn't know who the fuck Karen Taylor is. Yeah, but um, Phil could send a cheeky photograph. Yeah, but no one fucking cares. But I would have preferred they went to Mexico, you know, fucking go on a shopping spree in Mexico. Do a lot of wrestling. Just be in Spain. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Just don't know why you're loving Mexico for some reason. Never loved Mexico before. I should go to Mexico. Why? Yeah, sound. Um, that's just your that's your brain right now. Um, obviously, I suppose it did. It did also just get the Julius theme, and we we talked about a lot in the Wolf on Tap, so we probably don't need to go over the exact same point. But fundamentally, it was a very well deserved exit. It was it was sad, but it was it was bittersweet. But ultimately, it was a very fitting, or pretty much wasn't necessarily a happy ending. But at least they were in control, you know. They're off for their new life together. Mitch and Karen actually together for once, you know. Bailey's gone. M- Mac and Mia are gone. Like it was a, it was a very decent exit, and it was probably better than what they would have gotten under any other writers. Because I feel like Clenshaw will take care of the smaller characters, you know. Like even Finley, Finley didn't fucking do much the whole time. But at least he got a, an interesting exit where he fucking stepped up for the last week he was in. Like, they're not scared of making a character, of building the character only to let them leave. Um, But, I mean, it did something I never thought was going to happen. It made me actually like Karen Taylor, which is a fucking achievement because she's been absolute cheeks for the last six years of her being on the show. Um. So, just fair play. You did good. Appreciations to Clenshaw and all the actors. It will be very sad to see Mitch go, unfortunately. But it was a fairly... It was more explosive, but it was still a fairly kind of dialed back week this week. Which we need a couple of those before Christmas. Because ultimately, like, it's not fucking... Like, it, it, Christmas, everything's explosive. You need some of the more stripped-back versions to make sure that people don't get fucked. Like, fuck me more, Jesus Christ. Oh. But yeah, anything else to say about this exit? Uh, the good exit, I want to say. Um, Gonna enjoy Spain, hopefully. Hopefully we go over to Spain and we see them. Better see, yeah, better see. Do you know what I am imagining? And do, do you remember Scooby-Doo, the film? The live-action film? Yeah. Where we cut to, uh, I don't know where it is, on the beaches, and we see Shaggy and Scooby hotboxing the van, the food. I oh, want a fucking scene where they're in Spain, Mitch is in his shorts, Karen's like out sun tanning, and the kids are out running, and fucking, um, fucking, uh, Mitch is there with a fucking fry up in the back of the van, like, what you gonna do? <laughs> he's just he's just chilling there. He's just chilling eating food. Half box in the fan. <laughs> uh, yeah, past again. the dodgy on the left hand side. Oh, past the dodgy on the left hand side. Just, yeah, just things only your brain thinks of once again. Um, I. It would be a absolute fuck it. I feel like I'd, I would have taken acid. Um, yeah, it was a, uh, it was good fun. It was very good fun. I had a great time. Um, and it was just, I suppose, also just the Julius theme as well. Like I've made it, I've made this comment several times before, but the Julius theme does truly make something and make the moment significantly bigger than it has been at the time. Like because the Julius theme, like. <laughs> the way I coined it is the Julius theme is like the fucking lift at the end of Dirty Dancing. Where I don't know about anybody else, but the the whole bill the the whole the rest of the movie to Dirty Dancing is fucking it's nothing. It's not important, you know. Might be adorable, 
not really that adorable. But that lift at the end, you know, where they fucking do, like that just makes the movie. And that's what Julia's theme does. Because like I was I was I was not enjoying Dirty Dancing watching it. But you know, the lift that I've had the time of my life, just like fucking cinema, just you fucking made it, boys. Oh, that was great. Like tears pissing out. Like it's so beautiful. That's what the Julius theme does. Where it just something that isn't even that sad, but because you know the significance that this is it. Alright, it finally hits, you finally realize Yeah, this is done. This is probably the last time we're seeing Karen Taylor ever. Last time we're probably seeing Mitch ever. Like that, you know, it, it find it all hits and it all just kind of rushes out. Um But yeah, it was just it was just really good. It was it was fantastic. Um they definitely probably for what they did, they managed to get a lot more than they really earned about their time on the show. So I'll just give all the credit and all the love to everybody who was involved in that exit. Because, well, you're not getting much better than that. Quite like the Lola death, you're, you're not getting better than that fucking storyline. So there we are. Um, do you have anything else before we just wrap up the podcast, Piggy? I have nothing else to add, really. Yeah, we uh got, uh, spaffed all the energy up the wall. <laughs> now we're working with the scraps. Too busy spending forty minutes chatting about Christmas. But yeah. no, it's been uh, it's been a hefty podcast, and well, I'll just I'll just peel back the curtain. Obviously, after this is done recording, it's it's then a day off. You know, with we're, we're then chilling, nice little break before Strictly and all the rest of the stuff starts up. So it'll be good stuff. And I've, it's been a great week. It's been a great week. There's only three left. So just expect these to get more hysterical as they go. <laughs> as the year's rounding up, boys. But, and as always, we, we don't really do the awards in this season simply because we're usually dealing with some fairly hefty, like, um, fairly strong topics. And we kind of, you know, we don't, we don't really like to do the awards in these scenarios. So they, they will be back in January. Um, but, you know, we, we've had the fucking massive tangent about Christmas shows and TV. That's what you're getting instead of the awards over this next month. But yeah, it's another edition of Wolford in, well, Wolford on tap. It's another edition of Watching Wolford, episode number 49. Um, and it's been a good one, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Tell us what you think in the comment section down below. I've been Ash from Watching Wolford, and I've been joined by Piggy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, how do you do? How do you do, Pam? Hold on, give me one second. Oh, back up. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, we're going for it. Um, yeah, just comments wise, just keep keep having fun. Um, I hope everybody's enjoying all of the extra Christmas stuff that we're doing. So it's just important to just show that we've been working a lot this season. And I hope people are actually enjoying what we've done. We've been trying to trying to experiment with a couple of different video ideas. So if you've been enjoying the, the Christmas reaction videos, for example, I'm sure we can pump out more sort of stuff like that. Um, so there we are. That was all just covering. I didn't mean any of that. It was all just because Piggy was busy. <laughs> <It's>... um, <laughs> would, would love to um, know if people but... like it, though. I will say that much. Um. Yeah, uh, without further ado, uh, I must bid you a farewell and a goodbye. But first, we have to leave you an enchanted script. And this enchanted script says, follow us. But first, follow our best friend, Gladerbine2049, on Twitch. Okay, I guess I'll... I guess and... I'll, 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 I'll put it... I'll even put it on the screen. And while I do... Well, well as put it on the screen... I will run through our other socials if you do not mind. Thanks, sir. Um, you can follow us on Twitter slash X, Instagram and Twitch at Watching Walford. We are on YouTube at Watching Walford. We have a wrestling channel. We are One More Match 182 on YouTube with with Peter, our best friend, who I do rag, take the piss out of, but it's all good fun. He, uh, they take the piss out of me, I take the piss out of them. You know, we go back and forth. Um, 
you want Ash's content, it's Aqua Dreams on Twitch and YouTube. And you want his Twitter, it's real Aqua Dreams on Twitter slash X. Yeah. And did you flash up the image? Uh, which image? I thought you flashed up an image of this of the Twitch. No, never did. <laughs> Someone's but... not been watching the podcasts. Imagine if you would do that. No, not our Twitch. Fucking Slaters. I, 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 show, I, well, I didn't, I just showed the name. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all we have in the chanted script. Hope you have a lovely holiday. Um, leave your comments, tell us what you think. And we, we are watching Walford. You or I, we are we, we are all the walrus. I suppose also Coo-coo just to say, it's lovely. I suppose just to say, Probably expect the podcast to be a little fucking tired, as it, we have some pretty hectic recording weeks going on. Um, we're still like we're still active like six days a week, whilst trying to do all the content that we're doing. Like obviously, once Strictly ends, it'll be a much nicer to have the weekends back. But yeah, for now we are still on like six days a week, fucking working our tits off to try make it a fun Christmas for you. So I hope everybody enjoys it. But yeah, the podcast will be a little bit more unhinged than usual. It's just what happens at the end of the year, doesn't it? It's just everybody just kind of starts to go a bit mental. And that's fine. Um, but it's just just expect it to happen here. <laughs> yes, thank you for watching Watching Wolford. Join us on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.